Have you ever asked yourself, how do you get a high rate of return without a significant level of risk? This is the very question that I asked myself many years ago. And I've spent most of my lifetime trying to invest in things that allow me a high potential return with a relatively low or no risk. Hi, Greg Miller here, attempting to do the exact same thing that that question was asking. Learning how to get high returns with almost no or low risk on my investments. This path has come from me reading and studying gurus like Warren Buffett. You probably have read Warren Buffett's quote about him saying that he guarantees that he could get 50% on stock market returns if he managed a million dollars. When I read this, I said to myself, enough. I am sick and tired of getting bad returns and I'm sick and tired of doing all this extra hard work and just simply getting what the market returned. And so I spent some time and spent a lot of time studying the things that Warren Buffett and other billionaires did in order to become successful at what they do today. This path has led me on to another billionaire that you may be aware of if you're investing in the stock market, and his name is Joel Greenblatt. And you're probably here because you, like me, think that special situations is one way that you can improve your investment returns. I wholeheartedly believe this. And looking at Joel Greenblatt's experience between 1984 and 1995, he had the same type of experience that Warren Buffett said that he could guarantee to anybody today if he had a million dollars. Joel Greenblatt, over those, that decade, he was able to return to his investors 50% every single year. Now, to me, that's really important because it's recent. It's something that I believe can still happen. Secondly, Joel Greenblatt had been so successful as an investor over those 10 years that he got to a point where he returned all of his partner's money back to them so that he could go on and do investing the way he wanted to do it. This is my goal, and this is my experience in this YouTube channel on how I'm trying to replicate what Warren Buffett did back in the 50s and 60s and what Joel Greenblatt has done recently in the 90s. My focus is identifying special situations that will help me gain at least 50% or more on my investments. I'd like to do a little bit of introduction to you so that you kind of know who I am. I'm an Idaho farm boy. I grew up on a farm in, the small, in a small town in Idaho and I spent plenty of time out in the fields. My heart was not in working on a farm though. I've always found investing to be really interesting. In high school, I spent my first money and invested in a, a mutual fund through a, a high fee brokerage firm. I went ahead and enjoyed that for a little while. And in college, I started investing in individual stocks. In college, I also started investing in real estate and found that to be another lucrative place to put my money. Well, fast forward from college into the 2008-2009 financial crisis, my real estate holdings went belly up. And at the end of that time, my wife and I sat down and we got to a point where we were basically at a net worth of negative $30,000. Prior to that, my, my net worth was probably double that in the positive. This was a really difficult time for us. We had stress in our marriage. We had stress individually. We had two children that were expecting us to take care of them. And I remember those days as very dark ones, but they were difficult and I was able to get through them thanks to my wife and us working together. Over the next decade or so, we ended up starting buying real estate again. We bought some real estate back in 2011, and it turned into being one of the best things that we were able, ever able to do. And that started generating the income that allowed me to get interested in investing again. And fast forward to today, over the last couple of years, I've spent my time trying to really be concerted and diligent 
with the way that I invest. I'm personally of the opinion that as a small investor, I have advantages over the large institutional investors. And part of the reason is, is going back to that day that I decided to buy that second bit of real estate after I'd lost everything during the financial crisis. I remember going in to my investment brokerage firm. Remember the one that I went to in high school and put some money in with them? Well, after 20 years of holding my money, I finally looked at the account and I was like, you know what, it should be great. I, I looked at my account and I had actually had a loss over those, those 20 years on my investment. So I walked into the brokerage firm and I told them I wanted to close my account. And it was really interesting because the, the broker, he says, well, you know, you could use this for, a, for something in the future. And I was like, no, I don't want that. In fact, I asked him, so how much money did I put into this? And I'm sorry, I'm kind of a snarky fellow sometimes. And this is part of the reason why I'm snarky is because of these particular situations that I've had with salespeople. In this particular case, I had less than what I put into it almost two decades prior. And after he looked at the amount that I'd put in and the amount that it was in the account, he was very quiet. It was really funny because he, in that same conversation, he told me how important it was that I shouldn't put money into real estate. And I spent some time talking to him and saying, no, if you're going to buy real estate, you need to identify how much you're actually going to get out of it. And he shared war stories about how he made mistakes and was losing money on an investment property every month. And I thought, you know, I'm not going to take my financial advice from somebody that can't figure out the simple fact that you have to have positive cash flow in real estate. And that's what kicked me on to investing in special situations on my own. I decided to stop taking the advice of salespeople on how I'm going to invest. Fast forwarding to today, the investment money that I put into special situations is not an entire portion of my net worth. It's about a third of my current net worth. And I do keep money in other retirement accounts. So realize that when I'm investing in these things, I'm not committing my entire net worth against something because I think that there is a need to continue to preserve capital as well as attempt to grow it. Of that amount, uh, I include some IRAs, I include and taxable accounts, and I include a little bit of money that I manage for family members. The things that I discuss on these videos are things that I try to do every week that help me improve my personal investment returns on the money that I manage for myself. My wife and I, we still live in Idaho. It's one of the best places in the world. We also enjoy spending time with our now three children, with our oldest one getting into high school these last couple of years, and we enjoy spending time with them. I want to make sure that I can continue to take care of them, and this is the reason why I invest. This is the reason why I try to learn to be better at investing each and every day, each and every week. Some final thoughts. I'm not a financial advisor. So I cannot give you specific advice on what to do with your particular investments. I can't tell you when to buy. I can't tell you when to sell. I can, however, tell you what I'm doing. And you can decide for yourself if you're interested in buying or selling. I recommend that you spend some time understanding what you're doing on your own in order to be able to be successful at that. So make sure if you put money into these particular companies that are talked about in this uh, YouTube channel, that you understand the risks that are associated with them, that you do your own research and you, you identify your own conclusions on whether or not you should put some money behind it or not. As we finish up, I'd like to share with you three investment tenets that I personally follow when I'm investing in special situations. One, I assume that as a small investor, I should be able to beat larger institutional investors. This goes back to that quote by Warren Buffett about how he could beat investment returns. He says specifically 
that anyone who tells you that size doesn't matter in investment returns is selling. And in this particular case, I think that's true. Small investments and small funds to invest allow me to invest in all sorts of different things that wouldn't even be interesting to someone like Warren Buffett, or in that case, Joel Greenblatt. But they still present an opportunity to invest. The second tenet that I think of when I invest is that I believe that anyone can do this. Now, Warren Buffett did it. He often talks about how he's not necessarily the smartest person. Joel Greenblatt did it. He talks about how some of the investments that he did in special situations were just a matter of understanding the math that was involved. And I believe that if you spend some time just trying to understand the situation, you usually can do quite well. My final belief, my final tenet, is that I believe that people win in investing when they limit their losses. If I can limit my loss, then I know that on the good years, I'll do just fine, but on the bad years, I'll still have my capital preserved for the next round of investing. This isn't a game where you win by having the most at any given point of time. This is a game where you win by making sure that you can still play tomorrow. If you find that these things are the things that you want to learn about in investing and you want to join me on my personal educational journey through special situations, please subscribe. As we finish up, I'd like to share with you three, three,